Mankind has marveled at the idea of traveling to space for centuries. Throughout time, technology and scientific knowledge has developed. Humans have been able to counter odds and challenges that for hundreds of years were thought impossible. However, man has only been able to dream inside their own little world, Earth. We've always expanded, always gone one step further, but never dreamed of what's beyond Earth. Why? Are we scared? Scared to encounter what we don't know? What we fear? Only in the 20th century did men begin to explore the stars. The start of rocketry was quite subtle. Robert Goddard, an independent scientist, proposed using rockets to launch scientific equipment into space. Goddard's dedicated research into launching mechanisms and formulas had a massive impact on the Soviet and American space programs. In 1957, Sergei Korolev, the lead Soviet rocket engineer and a small team of scientists constructed a small satellite, Sputnik. The launch of Sputnik was successful, thus it was the first man-made construction to orbit the Earth. The launching of Sputnik shocked the world. Nation after nation goggled at the Soviet's achievement. Their headlines focused on the Soviet's sudden space knowledge. As the Cold War Museum puts it, while the Sputnik launch was a single event, it marked the start of the space age in the US-USSR space race. This interested the otherwise ignorant American citizens because of the potential threat to national security, the Soviets putting nuclear warheads on Sputnik-like crafts. Werner von Braun, a vital Nazi rocket scientist who joined the American space effort in World War II, could have achieved this a year earlier with the Jupiter-C project. However, his funding was terminated due to the extreme expense and the confusion of how space exploration could help society. Von Braun later used Sputnik to lobby for an American space program. On November 8, 1960, John F. Kennedy was elected President of the United States. Eisenhower left several challenging space issues for Kennedy to investigate and settle. However, given Eisenhower's interest in space exploration, the groundwork was set for JFK. Eisenhower's NASA allowed Kennedy's diplomatic quest for manned missions to space to become a reality and function as well as it did. But why some say the moon? Why choose this as our goal? And they may well ask, why climb the highest mountain? Why, 35 years ago, fly the Atlantic? Why does Rice play Texas? We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. Because that goal will serve to organize and measure the best of our energies and skills because that challenge is one that we're willing to accept. On April 12, 1961, the Soviet Union launched Yuri Gargan into space. This event once again shocked the Americans in the Kennedy administration. The enemy of the United States had beat them to one of the most amazing feats man has ever achieved. The U.S. was embarrassed once again. The most powerful nation in the world was now portrayed as a failure, a laughing stock for the international community. Kennedy now searched for a significant cause that would save him and his country from utter humiliation. The new president was presented with many developing programs that searched for government funding and approval. The most intriguing of these programs was the American Space Program. After weeks of intense pressure from his cabinet and other important figures, Kennedy was convinced that the proper response was to pour effort and money into the American space program. On May 25, 1961, Kennedy announced his plan to Congress. He wanted to challenge the Soviets and show Americans that he had a plan to react to the second Soviet launch. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. However, Kennedy had more important things to worry about such as the Cold War and Vietnam War. Thus, there were several other significant factors that were more important, requiring his immediate attention. So instead, on June 3, 1961, Kennedy met with Nikita Khrushchev, a Soviet leader at the time, and presented an idea of making space exploration an international effort in order to save American funds. Khrushchev showed no interest in this and terminated the idea. To his disappointment, Kennedy now had to drastically increase NASA's yearly budget in order to accelerate the American journey to the moon and catch up with the Soviet Union. True. Kennedy was a politician, first and foremost. Kennedy uh, was interested in political things, whatever those political things are. Uh, his decision to go to the moon was not built around 
any ethereal ideas about exploration or uh, human destiny or any of that kind of stuff. It was built around the, the, the sum total of the, uh, the desire to beat the Soviet Union. The moon was the obvious choice for the Americans to aim for, as the Soviets had already claimed the first Earth orbit and near-Earth space exploration. However, the American space program was not willing to give up before they got space first. Therefore, the moon presented itself as the most challenging and also the last plausible first for the people. It is part of our soul to want to explore, and this is kind of another way for us to grow. Apart from economically boosting the American space program, Kennedy had set himself up for the challenge of convincing the people of the importance of a successful trip to the moon in order to gain public support and accelerating funds. Kennedy could now only wait for the NASA administration to work their magic and construct a successful Apollo program and send man to the moon. On November 22, 1963, President John F. Kennedy was assassinated during a public appearance in Dallas, Texas. Kennedy was an influential leader in the minds of many. His goal to put man on the moon had been set. The people were convinced that NASA had created the Apollo program in order to achieve this goal and would complete it as Kennedy's dying wish. The Apollo program progressed. Engineers and scientists worked on the rocket that would change history. On July 16, 1969, Neil Armstrong, Michael Collins, and Buzz Aldrin were launched into space. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon. We choose to go to the moon in this decade and do the other things, not because they are easy, but because they are hard. It's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. This event was broadcasted worldwide, marking the official ending to the space race and the goal proposed by President Kennedy, as well as the start to a new age in space exploration. After the Apollo 11 mission, the U.S. kept on expanding into space with several other missions to the moon. In total, 12 other men had walked the lunar surface, gaining new insight and knowledge for NASA. Even though JFK didn't think that the space race was the most important frontier the U.S. had ventured into during the 60s, his dedication to the program had a massive impact on what we do and see today. One has to realize that JFK's funding for the space exploration paved a pathway during the 60s for cellular satellites and most of our technological ways of communication that we use today. The joint Soviet space program may have not worked back then, but today Kennedy's dream has come true. Russian and American astronauts work together in the International Space Station to help advance human knowledge of space. Engineers are working on developing technology that will progress space exploration in the future. By the mid-2030s, I believe we can send humans to orbit Mars and return them safely to Earth. The fundamental problem with a uh, mission to Mars is why do you want to do it? If it's about bragging rights, which is fundamentally what Apollo was about, if it's about bragging rights, ask yourself the question, what do we need to brag about? Yes, it can, we can do it. We can set a program in, in, in train and we can accomplish this particular task. But what is the point? President Obama has set similar goals to that of President Kennedy, reaching from Mars like Kennedy pursued the moon. The politician's personal involvement is quite a change, although the quest is mutually as breathtaking. The strong financial and political leadership shown by Kennedy during the space race was what the American space program needed to succeed. This is shown today through the development and possible advancement of space exploration. All right. What do you want? You, you want the moon? Just say the word and I'll throw a lasso around it and pull it down. Hey, that's a pretty good idea. Yeah. I think it's gonna be a long, long time Till touchdown brings me round again to find I'm not the man